hello guys and welcome back uh, it's been a while since I've been uploading um, me speaking in the background of videos or whatever I'm sorry I've been a little bit lazy and I've been procrastinating a lot uh, so <clears throat> sorry if the videos for the 1k you have you guys have to hear a bunch of people in the background my apologies that's my fault but we're back at it again, going to on um, of our local stores here at Versus in Oviedo, um, and I I was testing here the Samurai V. I think Samurai V has a lot of potential and can take one shot hit like on the first attack. You can one shot uh, those RCS V stars with 100 uh, 280 HP. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and, and start with the matchup here uh, my opponent on the left is playing Arceus Pikachu flying Pikachu and on my side here well I'm playing the Samroth but let's see let's go ahead and take a look here on on you know how, how we do on this matchup and if Samroth is a good cont contestant up against one of the fastest and awesome deck that is Arceus Let's go ahead and jump into business. So go here and my opponent start starting with the Flying Pikachu. Flying Pikachu is okay to start with because he has a free retreat cost. So it's not that much of a of a pain to have in the active spot. Uh, my opponent has a path to the peak which will shut us down. If he tries to play that, um, if we try to do something cheeky like go grab a Crobat, uh, we rely on abilities here, uh, not too much from the V Stars Pokemon or the V Pokemon, but more for like the Italian engine that I was playing here. So my opponent goes quick balling, and the Arceus. Sorry if the if the camera you guys see that it shakes a lot. Uh, my the big tripod that I had, uh, one of the legs broke, so I can't stand it up on the floor. I have to use one of my mini tripods to record here. Um, and every time we slam the door uh, with passion, well, you see that your camera gets scared and shakes up a little bit. But it doesn't matter because we actually got some cool game here. My opponent benches the Arceus and attaches the Turbo Energy. And we're going to be starting here with a Quick Ball. Uh, we have a stadium of our own. Uh, not that we need it now, but we can also play it uh, due to the fact that we have a research in hand. So, I kind of want to play that out. It doesn't matter. We're gonna get we're gonna get rid of our hand here, so it's not that big of a veggie. Uh, we're gonna get ourselves another Samoroth V, because this uh, Samoroth V that is gonna be on the active spot is gonna be probably is gonna take a lot of damage. And we don't want that to be our uh, you know our attacker. We want our attacker to be fresh and has, you know, uh, energies and evolutions and all that shit out. Cool stuff, yeah, cool beans. And we got, we got, we got a nest ball here for next uh, to get ourselves a Sobble. And also we have an energy attachment for turn, which is pretty good. Uh, originally, the, the uh, from where I took this list is a list uh, that got played in Japan and won. Uh, but four of the energies are one of the dark energies, the special dark energies that allows you to retreat for free. Um, I I wasn't that comfortable playing the four energies due to the fact that Duraladon is seen play. Uh, not that many people play it, but you can see one or two uh, Pokemon players going at your locals every week playing it. Like for example, one of my uh, team members, Juan. And Chucho, <laughs> so he's playing it out over there. Uh, so that's why I didn't want to play, to be honest, because every time I go with my teammates and my team is go, we go to tournaments. We always end up playing each other for some reason. It doesn't matter if we win; we could be three wins, zero losses, and they still put us together. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So my opponent here, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be playing the research in hand. My opponent thinking here, I thought he uh, saw him grabbing a boss's orders or uh, an energy. One of the, one of the two, one of the two. I don't know why I'm speaking with a lift. 
But eventually, my opponent will be gusting that Sobble there. That Sobble, it is a threat to him because right now he's thinking, oh, my hand is dead. And I need to. He's not. This is a good play from my opponent, and this is an excellent play. Getting rid of that Sobble because also that Sobble is the one that's gonna uh, allow us to hit for quick shooting to our opponent, which is kind of cool. Uh, kind of cool. So that way we can do. 220 damage with the attack of Samurai, so we can do that much instead of doing 110. Uh, but there it is, the energy attack from turn uh, uh, stadium. So we're not going to be able to use our ability to get one to hit to one shot this Arceus here because of that pesky path to the peak. But we're going to be able to swing for 220, 230 damage, counting the 10 damage. Uh, counters that so the Zigzagoon potentially is going to hit here. But my opponent grabbing two lightning energies and one fighting. This fighting is going to be probably going into the Arceus and the two lightning into the Pikachu, or the three of them can go to one Pokemon. But no, they're going like I said. And we evolved here our Samoroth. We're going to be using that on air rod because I think we have a research in hand. So that's actually pretty good. And we kind of want to put that Sobble back in it. Uh, but at the same time, we're getting rid of uh, an Intellian engine and a Drizzle engine. Which is not quite good, you know. You're saving two Pokemons, but you're not saving uh, that many. Because <laughs> I, I, that, that was my, my process. I thought the process is because I didn't have um, another Samurai V-Star in my hand until I top decked it. So my objective was to put those two in and then, you know. But here we go, level ball. We're getting on the Zigzagoony Looney. Uh, now, ooh, don't worry, I didn't mix my cards with it. I swear to God. <laughs> We're not gonna be taking the knockout here due to the fact that my opponent has that path to the peak, like I said. Uh, but we're gonna be slapping uh, 220, 230 damage in total in this turn. Now, what will save us? This uh, for hit my opponent's turn is if my opponent does not play a chance care. If my opponent plays a chance care, we're gonna be in a very bad situation because all that damage that we put in it is gonna go away. We do not want that, we want it to stick because potentially for next turn, if we manage to bump this stadium, we can use our V star to slap the, my opponent for 40 damage counters and take a knockout there, and then we can potentially hit another Pokemon, which is quite good spreading damage taking prices that's pretty epic but let's see if my opponent uh, he only has three cards in hand so uh, debating here whether or not he plays that other Arceus in my opinion it's not that important discarding a pa another path to the peak and a Arceus V uh, I think right now at this moment my opponent is really set up now involving the flying Pikachu He's really set up here. He does not need another Pokemon there. Uh, oh well, if you want more consistency, drop down to Bidoof in order to evolve it into the uh, the other one. I forgot his name right now. So he can draw more cards just in case if we potentially Roxanne my opponent or Monty my opponent. That's pretty good out for those two card supporters. Um, but since my opponent play the research, we are going, going to be taking... Uh, not our first yeah our first two prizes my opponent is ahead of one ahead of the prices because he took the knockout on the Sobble but right now we are going to be ahead of him by taking two more um, so now what we need to find is if we find ourselves look at that beautiful energy plus uh, this dude <laughs> um, probably if we find ourselves at stadium we kind of want to hold it uh, why? Because my opponent has, still hasn't resolved his RCS shenanigans. That's why I'm waiting for him. Um, um, but yeah, uh, if we we don't we do not want to play our stadium right now. Even though it will be it will be good if we have a stadium because, like I said, we can bump his stadium, play our uh, secondary training court, use the ability, knock him out, and then once he promotes something else. We can knock it out if he promotes the Bidoof or if he promotes the Pikachu or the other Arceus. So, you know, we can poke damage. 
Uh, but now this flying Pikachu is using the active, looking very chunkalicious, and is going to take the knockout here. So let's see what my opponent goes for. Is he going to go for Impossible Orders and target the? No, not necessary. He wants to take a knockout here, so that way he is ahead of a prices. But he's trying to think, you know, thinning is winning. What does my opponent need right now? I do not know. He needs an Ultra Ball for so that way he can use the Ultra Ball and evolve the Bidoof. But I, I think he has a Raihan in hand. Ooh, he's going to go for the uh, Pumpkin, Pumpkin Boo. I think the strategy here for my opponent is to bump the stadium and probably get a Crobat or a Raihan for the Crobat to draw more cards because right now he's in the pickle, he only has two cards and getting the energy, attaching the energy into the Bidoof and let's see, yeah, getting the Crobat there, that's pretty nice, it's pretty nice indeed and now that my opponent bumped the stadium potentially we can play we can start doing our ability shenanigans here so that's that's kind of cool uh, but crowbar there for a couple more cards uh, for four more cards oh but no my opponent is a cheeky good player and he rebenches a path to the peak this deck plays at least four so you're bound to see them slap them in your face so there it is another path to the peak and uh, on top of that, an Ultra Mole, so that way he can get the um, man, the Bibero. That is the name that I was looking for a few seconds ago. The Biberos, the Beeps, the little gaudy gaudy. Evolve there, and he's going to be drawing more cars. Is this deck called Mew or what? <laughs> I don't think so, but you're drawing cars until you are satisfied with them and what there. It goes my opponent now is at an advantage because now he's going up to two, three prices. Uh, I'm promoting the six again because we can scoop it up. Yeah, and we're gonna promote the Diancy, six Zaguni, the active one. Ooh, and a pass. That is not good. We are in a pickle. My opponent gets a boss's orders here, and we're done. Boy, look at that. My opponent is also playing. I should have guessed that he's playing the VMAX if he has dark energies. Um, and I see the, the fighting energy, so I think this is like a Arceus, uh, like Arceus toolbox. It has Pikachu for the Palkia shenanigan, and it has Crobat for the Mew, and potentially it has uh, Sapdos for the Mirror Match or something that is weak to fight. So, this is like a, like a Arceus toolbox. I thought it was straight up. Flying Pikachu with the Arceus, but no. It's a very versatile <laughs> uh, deck here. And he my opponent has a rock sand. But does he have the boss of sorters? If he has the boss of sorters, he's gonna be putting a lot of pressure on me. But no, he is attaching another energy. A uh, turbo energy. He's attaching a turbo energy onto this big barrel. So now he has not one, not two, but three attackers. Four attackers ready, and he is using the B Barrel ability to draw one card. That's why you saw him draw it. Don't get, oh, no, 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 don't don't get worried, you know. And flying Pikachu taking the knockout here. And unfortunately, my opponent takes game number one. We didn't have it like I thought we would. We had a very bad hand. A bunch of Pokemons, no supporters, no Sobble to start with. This was a very, very bad hand for me. But luckily for us, this is one of the store, one of the few stores that plays best of three. So we're gonna be going up against, uh, going up, uh, game number two. Let's see if we have a better start here for us. And if it doesn't, then. Well, I guess we'll just scoop it up and um, you will not see that much play of this Samaroth V deck. You know, I try to also build Typhlosion, but Typhlosion is kind of a, one of those... It's a bad version of Dragapult, to be honest. It's a very, very bad 
uh, deck. I mean, I never, I never, I tried to build it, but once I saw my list, I was like, this sucks. And then, uh, by that time, my friends live, my, my team members live a little bit far away. I wasn't gonna drive there and test it out. So I tested with my wife, my wife plays. She doesn't play competitive Pokemon, but she likes Pokemon, and sometimes I build some weird decks and she helps me test it, you know. And then when I test against her, I was, sudden I was like, nope, nope. <laughs> I'm not playing this deck, so I took it apart and then built, uh, built Samoroth, um, which I like the most. My opponent giving us a mulligan, which is superb, considering that my opponent plays a... Uh, uh, a couple of Pokemon, a uh, basic Pokemon's in there, so he shouldn't be giving us a, uh, 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 mulligans. He should be setting up here with the godly hand, Arceus start, Pikachu bench, Bidoof bench, and then Krabba for more cards. Oh my god, that's something insane. Shut up, Ita. And, but yeah. Now let's see here. Uh, I got two energies in here, so that's pretty good. I guess, and I think, oof, a second mulligan, oh hell no, brother, you better shuffle that deck better, Riffle shuffle them, I don't know, don't feel bad if you have full arts in it, you know, this is why I don't play with full arts, even though, even though, that night, I managed to grab myself two Samurath rainbows, because I don't, I'm not a person that likes to bling the deck, I'm a person that likes to build a deck and having it, having it so random like for example if I have four if we have four different types of quick balls print I will have one art of each <laughs> I'm that type of weird person that has we have four bosses so we can have Lysanders uh, Giovanni's Exiles and what are the other ones I don't know like three different bosses orders in hand uh, like the same ones but different arts uh, for example, the research, um, having the four different type of research that are, and now we have the, the Professor Oak in it too. So there's a couple different art. So I'm that type of person that likes to play random stuff. And sometimes, if my team members have blinked out, like for example, you saw here that I was playing a shiny dressile. That shiny dressile is not mine. There's you know. That's not mine. I, I don't have the money for that. <laughs> man, yeah, man. It's, they're not that... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> they're not that expensive, but... If if I pull the card, I, you will see it in the deck. But if I don't pull it, I just play with the regular stuff. My objective is to have the cards in hand in order to, to build the deck and play it. But we have a good start here. Uh, my opponent cannot take a knockout here on the start, but he can uh, accelerate energies. And he can play Marnie or research, uh, but he cannot. He can potentially boss the Sobble, but it's not going to be a problem for us because we can scoop it up and then recycle it back down. Um, but now, what do we need right now? This Flying Pikachu has 190 HP, so it's it is in range of the knockout, and I don't have to use my V Star to knock it out. Uh, but potentially here, my opponent is. The best option for my opponent is to promote the Arceus, use the Trinity Charge, accelerate energies into either the Pikachu or the other Arceus, or to itself. Not to itself because it can't get knocked out. Um, and here, how can we reply to that, my opponent? Uh, setting up, getting the Bidoof early into the game so that way he can evolve it uh, next turn or eventually. Ooh, but. I don't think my opponent has that much. He has a rock sand and what else? Let's see if we can peek here. Let's check it out. And oh, I, I can't quite see the second card. But he is going to go for the Trinity Charge. Now, do we knock out the Pikachu to get it out of it? Because we can boss it out. We have an evolution in hand and we've got the Samurai V. Uh, what we need to get, and I also have a Samurai V at the bench, so if we won, well, yeah, we, we, we have options here, we have options here, um, I think the best bet is to just knock out the active one, try to find ourselves 
the uh, six goon and Panic hit it for 220. Uh, there we go. We already dropped our turn. We're gonna use a V star. No, we're gonna use the V star. But uh, I should have saved it. I should have saved it, Victor. Oh, but we we are just gonna stay like that. We're not gonna be using the research probably because we got valuable cards in hand and we don't want to discard them. But we unfortunately we had to use the V star. Unfortunately, we have to use it, which is it pains me. And the second card that my opponent had was the RCSV, so he has stuff to do. Uh, man, I should have used I should have used that V star on probably the bench. Uh, RCS or just hit the the flying Pikachu for 40 damage, so that way we can do something sketchy for next turn. But probably. The best bet is that we had some cards in hand that we didn't want to discard, and then this is why we did that play. But sometimes we have a brain fart, and then we misplay. But it's okay, we took two prizes. That's, that's pretty... That's cheerio! <laughs> but it would have been suboptimal if we just research and find something else. I don't know, I want to see my hand. Sometimes I try to spread the hands without my, my opponent seeing the cards that I have in hand and show it to the camera. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't because I don't think of it, but it, it's good to do so. And I'm see if I can, and I'll escape using, I'll see if I can find my the, the tripod that I used to use uh, so I can buy a new one and treat it probably with more care so that no legs break so that way we have a better angle. And we can see both hands or whatever. But there it is. He's going for the Subble. Taking a knockout here. Probably he went with that option uh, because we didn't even play a supporter next turn. Uh, oh, we had a rod. So that's cool. We probably tricked my opponent and be like, hey, I don't have supporter in hand. And that's why he went for the boss uh, knockout. But right now, we're not going to be taking a knockout here on the Arceus. We didn't have that much. We had a dark patch, but that's okay. We have training core to get those energies back. Uh, so, I should have played the research last turn. Don't know why I didn't do it. But there it is. We have another Sobble. Hopefully, they don't knock it out now. We have a quick bull and a level bull, so we potentially can get ourselves a six goon and another saw bull, and then we can pin and hit my opponent for 220 damage. The problem here is that my opponent for next turn can use chance care if he's playing uh, that in his list. He can chance care, take all that damage out, and trust me, when your opponent does that to you and you like spend a lot of time putting damage counters on him. It is kind of triggering seeing your opponent heal those <laughs> damage up because it's like ah, now I have to redo it again and it is painful but right now we're gonna get two subbles just in case my opponent gets a little bit freaky which I don't think he will because if he keeps targeting the subbles there it is the hand of Mark the man the myth the legend you saw there you saw his flesh <laughs> Shout out to you, my man. <laughs> uh, and then we're gonna six Aguni, ping the active, and slap this RCS for 220 damage. Now, how my opponent will respond to this? My opponent is a little bit in a, like a sketchy spot. But like I said, he can try to find. Look at that, he has all the pieces of the puzzle. He can try to get himself a chance care. He has a Pokemucu there. So potentially he can attach energy into the barrel, play the Pokemucu, and draw two cards on one card. But I don't think that's quite good. We already used our V Star, so other than that, we're not going to be in a pickle uh, unless my opponent minus me, and then we have to search for the Crobat. Which that's gonna be problematic. But right now we are pretty much set up, so even if my opponent does Marty and put us in a pickle, we still have stuff to do. Uh, I tell my opponent, my opponent's not gonna search for ability for the energies to accelerate, but he still has to shuffle because that's 
uh, what it says in the attack of Arceus. So, if it was for me, I would just tap it. But he has to shuffle it down. Uh, uh, Driss out here, probably gonna get ourselves another scoop up net, potentially. Ooh, we're going for Marty. All right, we got the Marty here. Uh, we're gonna be taking a knockout now on this Arceus, but I would love to play, see me playing uh, a different, uh, other uh, scoop up net, so that way we can scoop up the 60 Goonie and then hit the Flying Pikachu for 10. Uh, so that way we can put a more pressure on it, and then we're going to get the Training Core, Training Core, Accelerate Energy into the Samoroth. And don't have a scoop up net, but we can get the scoop up net with that drizzle and then level ball to get ourselves another sobble potentially here. There it is. So we're doing it, we, we're doing it backwards, but we're doing it. Let's see if I, I don't, well, I don't know why I'm shuffling here because we need to evolve that sobble, we need to evolve it in order to to use the quick shooting because that's what you want to use in this deck you want to prioritize like evolve to have two of them evolve into um, into dress out so that next turn you can do 40 damage ping in it so that's quite good this Pikachu has if I'm not mistaken I think this Pikachu has 310 HP or 300 not not sure sure but nonetheless, we are in a pretty good spot here. My opponent still needs to take uh, a bunch of prices, uh, five prices to be exact, and we only have two there. So potentially, if my opponent decides to bench another Arceus, we can target it with boss and win the game. Or if he doesn't, and he plays like safe, we can uh, hit that dude. Ooh, but we're gonna get Roxanne. Oh no, we're gonna get Roxanne. All right, so that's that's that's, that's not good. Roxanne here. My opponent had two Roxanne in hand. This deck plays two, as you can see. Very good. Uh, my opponent is gonna be drawing six. For those of you who don't know what Roxanne does, it is like a very bad Marnie, very bad <laughs> judge for yourself. Uh, so you draw six, your opponent draws two. So it's like a, it, it's like a. <laughs> so he marred me as he rocks in us into a good hand, as you can see. We have a scoop on that, and we have a dress out, and we have an evolution instance. So my opponent tried to disrupt us, but our shuffling sh uh, techniques prevail uh, this time because sometimes we get some hands that are pretty darn sketchy. Then we're gonna get the evolution here, hitting my opponent for 20 damage. And then scooping up that guy and slapping it for 10 more, putting it into 30. And Driss out here. Now, for the next turn, we have checkmate on my opponent. We can get a research to man. We've got everything in here. So that Roxanne treated us pretty good. <laughs> you can see my opponent get a little bit frustrated because, you know. It is, it is pretty amazing when Roxanne helps you out disrupt your opponent, but it's not pretty good when he gives him the sauce. And we have another Samurai there. Uh, we benched it out. It's not that big of a veggie. You know, we're still, like I said, we at the moment, we are in a pretty good spot. Um, we can also get ourselves a Driss out, and there it is. And dress now so we can slap my opponent for 250, not 220. I was saying later, uh, on the, I think it was last game, I was saying 220. No, we're slapping it for 250 damage, sir. 250 plus 30. That's 280 damage for you who are counting with your fingers. I'm not doing it. <laughs> yes, I'm doing it. <laughs> it's a bad habit, but like I said, we have checkmate here into our opponent. And my opponent scoops it up because we are ahead on prices. But now, what are we going to do with game three? Going second 
uh, last turn, it didn't work for us. So hopefully, my opponent gives us the first. Hopefully. I don't think it will happen, but who knows? We can predict stuff. Not really, because I already saw the video. <laughs> but yeah, there it is. Now let's see. Let's see if we can actually make a weird, cool play where we use our V Star ability and we put it to good use. We have to like, in order for us, for example, to that flying Pikachu. We we know that we're doing 250 damage with a choice belt. 250 plus 40 with the V Star. Uh, plus 20 with a quick shooting. Mm, I think we can get there. And then one shot flying Pikachu? Can we make that combo possible? I don't know. Stay tuned. No spoilers. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's when when he when he what do you say? When he pops, when he clicks, when your combos click back to back to back, and you feel like you feel like pfft, man. Well. We have mulligans, so this is not quite good. We, we don't want to give. We do not want to give cards to your opponent. Your opponent wants to give cards to you. <laughs> you always want that. Uh, let's give it a good shuffle here, and let's see if we can manage to find ourselves a basic Pokemon and not give my opponent a second mulligan like he did to us on game number two. Uh, we have a basic. We have a basic Sobble, Uh so that's. That's, that's good too. Well, we spoiler there, but now I think we're going. Yes, we're going. We're going. <laughs> we're going. We're going second. So we are potentially going to. Well, we have two quick balls in hand. So I am assuming that we're gonna go attach the dark energy to the subble quick ball for a Samoroth, bank the other subble and quick ball for a Crobat. That's like the the play, but let's see if we actually perform like we're saying here behind the scenes. And there it is, my opponent again starting with the flying Pikachu, which is not bad at all because you can retreat that freaking Malagu and do whatever the heck you want to do with it. So it's pretty good. And my opponent passes it here, not too much as Arceus is low maintenance. And we're gonna go ahead and discard that uh, dark energy because. Oh, and another thing, we only we are only playing in this deck one dark patch. Victor, you're crazy. One dark patch on a dark deck, you, you scrub. <laughs> but yeah, but you only need two energies to attack, technically. So I only the list, the Japan list was playing only one. So I'm following the list that that uh, Japanese player was playing at the moment. It's a 50-50 because he won one, I won one, so let's see if we can uh, give it 100% to this deck so that you guys can see that it's worth playing it. It is not, let, let me tell you this, it is not worth playing it when you're going up against Looney Tune and Soul Rock. Just concede. Don't do it. Don't, don't harm yourself with it. You see Looney Tune and Soul Rock? Run. Because that is one of the, one, uh, one single price card deck that came out on the Pokemon Go set. That hits like a truck. It does. So let's see if we do some stuff here. Uh, Switcheroni. Oh no, my opponent's gonna play the Ultra Ball. <laughs> Tricky guy here, y'all. Uh, what is he gonna get? Is he gonna get the Arceus V Star? Hell yeah! So that way he can use the V Star attack and the V Star ability. So that way he can get himself that Turbo Energy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was yawning. Uh, that, like I said, the V Star attack, so he can do the um, search his deck for a turbo uh, energy, attach it into the active, and then he can take the first knockout. So, let's see. Look at, look at. It. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but Juan is right there speaking into our ears. <laughs> see, see, he got it out of a pack. I remember, I know that uh, Mr. Huanchi here has uh, my Arceus. I have one Arceus uh, Rainbow. 
and he's using it. And for you people that know Juan, he bends cards when he plays. He's a very passionate player. And then he grabs a card like, oh, here, I got a boss. Placata. So if you see eventually Juan playing in one of my videos, if you see his card that looks like a bridge, I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's gonna cause a lot of pain, but I know. <laughs> uh, but that's how he is. Every time he grabs a new card, he has to bend uh, the bejesus out of it. He gotta do like a little bit of an exorcism to it, and then. Pfft. So, oh, and it's not just one card. All his, all of his cards are like that. So you cannot call a judge and be like he has uh, mark mark cards because all of the cars are bended. So it's like it's mm, something that he, his hand, his little big hands uh, do to the cars. Uh, but let's see here, we play, <laughs> enough of one. We play here <laughs> a uh, training court. We're gonna, I'm assuming, I put it to the side. Look at that, it's shady, god damn. We put it, the training court, the training court is sideways, so that means that we play the training court to attach the energy into that Samoroth. And with the help of Marnie here, we are gonna be getting ourselves a dress out. That was sketchy, but there it is. We have our we benching dead ions. You don't know why. We can get ourselves with that lovable. Well, we're gonna be using the evolution instance. Evolution instance, getting ourselves that. Um, ooh. And there's that for that. <laughs> this for this and this for that. Uh -huh. And now we're gonna grab that from. What are you doing? No. And then, okay. Now, probably, we're gonna be gonna be looking at some dark patch shenanigans. Okay, we're 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 playing it wrong here, but it is what it is. We should have just uh, evolved the one in the bench, put the dress on the bench, and then you know get the stuff out of there, and then do it differently, and then scoop up the active. We should have done it differently, but bear with me. We're 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 doing it. What we had planned in our heads is coming to fruition. And we have Lovable getting ourselves another dress out here. And with this dress out, we're gonna get Scoop Up Net. Uh, yes, playing the wrong. Playing the cards wrongly because we should have played Dress Out, evolved the Dress Out in the bench, get ourselves a Dark Patch, Lovable, get ourselves the other uh, uh, Dress Out, Dress Out, evolve. Scoop up the active and only use one scoop up instead of two. Freaking sausage. <laughs> and we're gonna be slapping this dude for 220 damage. Uh, he does. We don't have the choice though, so we couldn't take the damage, the, the knockout here, but. Now we, just, we are in a position where we have to pray that my opponent does not play chance care. He hasn't even shown it on the first game or second game hopefully he has it not in the deck and then we can actually play it we can actually the, the archies can stay with the damage on that would be beautiful but we we don't always get what we want in life so you just have to bear with me here let's see oh in my opinion he can get it he has the v-star there he hasn't used the v-star for some reason so he can get himself oh but he's not gonna use the v-star I might have missed it where he used the V-Star early in the first game, but I don't think he did. Yes, I don't think he did, so... We're gonna find ourselves an evolution instance and getting ourselves a quick shooting. Quick shooting the active, take two prizes, and then quick shooting something else, and then do more damage. That's the objective of the game. But, like I said, we have a choice though, so that's pretty good. We don't need it. I mean, we can attach it into the active, so that way we can do damage to potentially the other Arceus that he promotes. Uh, Shady Doom is here, getting ourselves probably two evolution instances. Oh well, only one, because we have one Dressal available to us, but that's all we actually need. Uh, yeah, get those two. Get the love. Get the six going with the lovable and the evolution instance with the quick shooting so now we are talking so we can do 10 damage counters to whatever he promotes 
hopefully we do not use the six again yet until he promotes. Thank God. You know, sometimes we do some weird sketchy stuff. But look at that! The mana put up giving us well it doesn't matter. We were going to take the knockout regardless, because he doesn't have nothing involved. But right here we can just uh ping the active, hit it for 20, and hit it for 220, and taking four prices in one turn, ladies and gentlemen. Four prices in one go. This is what you want Samurai. This is how you want Samurai V-Star to perform every time you play it. It's lovely to see it. It's very, very, very lovely. <laughs> but I think my opponent does not have a chance carrying his deck. Uh, I, I, I'm positive. I'm pretty sure because all that damage counters in it, you know. Now, what do we need to win the game? Boss's orders. We need to find ourselves a Drissile, evolve the Drissile, get a boss, and knock out the bench Arceus. It's not funny, only it's evolving only one. Oh, but he has, still has a V-Star available to him. <laughs> so he can still get, like, if he's in the pickle right now, he can get himself the research and he can get himself the other V-Star. And my friend, that is not going to be winning us the game. But, 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 we can do some weird comebacks here. Now for our turn, ooh, my opponent's gonna marty me. For our turn, for because we're gonna get knocked out, obviously, we're gonna get knocked out here. Now for our next turn, we need to find ourselves a samurai the V. Oh look at that! We have a boss's orders in hand. Now please do not. Evolve. Well, he's playing evolution engines, so it's not. Oh, that's a Roxanne. Never mind, that's a Roxy Roxy. But, uh. Since my opponent is going to be taking a knockout here, we could potentially rock sand him uh, to two cards and me up to three, which that will be perfect in the magical world. World. Now that my opponent does not have a uh, Bibero or a Bidoof, let's just call it Bibero. The Bibs, the Justin Bibs. And there it is. Oh, man. That means he has. Oh no, and so that way he can use a V-Star. Ha! <laughs> Please bench a Crobat. Bench a Crobat. Bench the Crobat. You bench the Crobat, man? That'll be good. Oh no, we have a boss's orders! That's a boss! That's not a Roxanne. Victor, what the frick? I have bad vision, that's why I use glasses. <laughs> but we have... We have... The Driss out there, Driss out can get us an evolution instance to evolve the Samurai. We have energy per turn, and that, my friends, can potentially win us the game. If my opponent either benches a Flying Pikachu or he benches a Crobat. If my opponent decides to bench a Crobat, that's our win con. But if my opponent decides to probably grab uh, the Bibero engine, the the B Doof and then B Barrel, then that's just gonna be that's not gonna be good for us. Uh but yeah. Kinda sad. But you know, see if my opponent makes the, the, the misplays of No He does not grab the Crobat. He grabs a Marnie and he grabs a Bothas orders and look at that. Another <sighs> Another Path to the Peaky. So now let's see. Now we can't not use our look at that. Now we can search, we can search for our own crowbat. So that's kind of cool. Uh, we have bosses owners in hand. Okay, how do we play this? That's what I'm thinking right now. Because uh, we can, we can bosses orders that uh, Arshis that is at the bench, and at the same time we can. Oh well, look at that! We're going for that play. We're gonna be doing 20 damage counters. That's 250, 260, 270, 200. That's a game! Oh shit! There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Three damage counters wins you the game. I was here so worried. Let's change it up because <laughs> the video has ended. But there it is. Three damage counters, choice belt, and 220 damage will win you the game guarantee so that was a good play for us that was a good play uh 
Who would have thought of that? Not me. I didn't. I thought we were going to do some other random shenanigans, but uh, like I said before, this is how you want Samurai V to perform in every matchup. You, d you don't always get it. You don't. But you'll see that on potentially another video that I'm doing that I will showcase here with... It'll be probably Lunatoon versus uh, Samurai Earth. Who knows? That is a boring matchup for me because I lose. <laughs> but nonetheless, we in this channel, we put our victories and we put our losses. So, we will see that. But like I said, overall, I am, I've been playing almost every week with it. And it's quite good. It is actually pretty good. Samurai it wins you the game. Uh, almost every, every every time uh, I have beat Palkia's I have built uh, beat Arceus Intellions uh, with Arceus I think I have uh, an art a matchup with me up against Arceus build that actually uses sharing care and now with that build we have to be careful with our where we place our damage counters because if we don't chance care and you can't do crap but yeah, this is one of the decks that I'm testing. The other one will be Darkrai. I'm testing Darkrai because I think Darkrai is a very good deck and I want it to be good. But sometimes you just get some random random hands that you'll be like, what the heck is this? So eventually you'll see uh, Darkrai here popping up in the channels. But without further ado, guys, I'm, I've been talking a lot. I'll let you guys go. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and leave a comment. Let's interact a little. Or if you have any uh, Dex ideas, just comment down below. Hey, can you do this? Just to test it out, see if it works, if it doesn't. One deck that I have in hand, uh, like I'm trying to build it, is Basket Legion Milk Tank. How do I win with it? I have no idea, because I have test played Shadow, Shadow Boxing with the deck, but I haven't quite sure how to make it work yet and i need to get my hands on three twin energies and four uh galar mine so we can make it possible and test it out because according to one of the japan's lists over there basket legion won a tournament and i want to see if those deck lists that they're playing out there are good actually here and if they are if they can win us some games if they don't then we just don't play it but i'll let you guys go thank you again for watching it and we are currently at 110 119 120 uh they keep subscribing and i'm subscribing they have they're playing with my subscription <laughs> but we have 120 that just say their subscribers thank you very much little by little we are growing and you know i'm glad that i'm getting you know the the love and attention here so Thank you guys. I appreciate it. And I guess I should let you guys go. Uh, peace out and have fun.